Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Lori Carter, who serves as president of Lawrence University. President Carter, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, absolutely. And I'm so excited to be able to talk with you. You've had, you know, such an illustrious career. Obviously, you're now at Lawrence uh, serving uh, the leadership uh, and uh, bringing your leadership there. But obviously at Juilliard uh, and, and other places, I've just had an extraordinary career. So one of the big things I would love to do is to kind of tap into how you view leadership and where you see things today. And so maybe we could just kind of start off right there. Um, as you look at, you know, where Lawrence is right now, what would you say would be, you know, the top, you know, maybe two things that you think are going to be really key um, as you look at your leadership time there? So I, I think that the times we are in really, um, calls for requires courageous leadership. We have to be willing to move forward in bold ways that respond to the needs of the present and the future. We have to honor the past. And so leaders require probably more adaptability than ever before. Uh, and along with that, from, from my own leadership style, really values so leading through values, but in a way that honors the past, but prepares institutions well for the future. Yeah, no, absolutely. One of the things uh, that I read, you know, about is that you kind of like this idea of, of, of improvisation, uh, you know, kind of the artistic term in terms of leadership. Just wondering if you could kind of share that, you know, because especially, right, I think about a lot of our audience and whether they might be in leadership roles, but especially if they're faculty or if they're, you know, musicians and or in orchestras or teachers, um, entrepreneurs, that a lot of times they look at higher education, they look at the academic world and they're like, that's not really improvisation. It feels mm -hmm. like these big institutions, they don't move very fast and all that. So I was just really curious kind of how you view improvisation in leading a, you know, a significant institution. Well, and, and I think that goes back to what I just discussed. We have to behave differently than we have in the past. We have to honor that past, but we, we absolutely have to create spaces that are responding to the future. And that's where improvisation comes into play, right? You have this really great piece of music that starts in one place, goes off in many, many different directions, but always comes back to its true self. And that's what organizations have to do. We have to be who we are meant to be in the world. We have to live out our mission. And we have to do that through our values, but we have to do it in new ways, ways that are responding to the world that has changed around us. Yeah. So when you've had kind of some key things, and I'm curious, especially for any leaders, definitely, I know we have many in our audience in, in higher ed where they've seen that particular issue that they want to change. Um, it could be related to diversity. It could be related to wanting to start a new degree program, changing curricular requirements, what, whatever it might be. But there's been either you know, opposition or um, it feels for them difficult. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they just stop or they give up. And what happens is potentially even years later, they feel less fulfilled that that kind of wonderful, you know, um, force that you're sharing about how an institution can really work. Are there any kind of kernels of advice that you would give those people in our audience who want to bring about that change, but either feel stymied or have felt like um, there's, there's opposition in such a way that they can't overcome it. So 
For several years now, I, I have really been following and um, implementing the work of John Cotter. John Cotter is the author of Leading Change and more recently, Accelerate. Uh, just Friday, I announced to the entire Lawrence community that we will be uh, really using Cotter's work to frame out how we are <laughs> going to manage the transformation that needs to take place at Lawrence. And so while we will always honor our shared governance model, our traditional hierarchy, uh, we are creating guiding coalitions to deal with some of our more urgent issues. These guiding coalitions will be comprised of stakeholders from all around the university, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and board members. And they will work on much shorter timeframes than is the norm in higher education. They each have a charge and a timeline, and that's how we're going to get this work done. And we started it by talking about the need for a sense of urgency. And the sense of urgency is around the fact that higher education has been and continues to be disrupted daily. And there is the impending uh, demographic cliff that's expected in 2025, 26. And if we are not preparing for that now, we will be behind and we can't afford to get behind. Lawrence is a great university and I want it to, to remain as a leader in space. Awesome. That sounds great. And I love that, especially building those groups so where you, you move the timeline to actually get things done, but still have that ownership and the, um, the kind of building, if you will, from the faculty students up into uh, the ultimate decisions that are made. So I, I love that. So of course, at here at Arts Engines, we're you know thinking about Lawrence Conservatory of Music and one of our great partners uh, with with Arts Engines and who've helped uh, you know co-curate this show and 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 others. And just curious, kind of for uh, some of our audience who are at broad institutions where they have arts divisions, music divisions, et cetera, conservatories, just how do you view the role of the arts in broader society and in a broader institution and obviously the conservatory? Well, you, you know, it, it is so interesting because the pandemic has taught us a lot. And one of the things I think it has brought to mind is just how important the arts are, how people were really starved for that experience of joining together, listening to a great piece of music or, or, or watching beautiful dance. And so they came up with other ways to do that virtually. But as things opened back up, folks really flocked to the arts. And why? Because it nourishes our soul. It's one thing to live in a society and, and work from day to day and, and, and sort of gather with folks in general terms. But when you come together around the arts, you're coming together around something different. You have this shared experience that is transformative in so many ways. I know here in Appleton, this year they brought back the Mile of Music. And I have to tell you the enthusiasm that folks had about just being together to listen to music was incredible. I, my, my, my first event for Mile of Music was to, to attend a drumming program that was put on by the Lawrence University Education Department. And the number of folks who were there participating in the drumming process, dancing to the drums, just freeing their souls and releasing all of that tension and anxiety from the pandemic. We need the arts more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, that, and, and I love how you just kind of, you know, uh, shared that importance of, of how we connect with one another and, and the role that the arts plays in that. Uh, you also reference, of course, how the arts really helped us do that during the pandemic. And I'm curious as we are hopefully in most many ways coming out of the pandemic, I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of that as a leader. Um, uh, do you feel like um, it, from your leadership perspective, that any things will stay different. In other words, that a lot of times people are like, oh, we can finally get back to doing this, back to doing this, et cetera. Do you feel like we've learned some things that will stay the same even once there is the threat of the pandemic has mostly subsided? 
Oh, I certainly hope so. You know, the idea that we can move much more quickly to, to accomplish wonderful things is something we learned. The world shut down and yet we continued to create ways to interact with one another, to nourish our souls, to, to really figure out a way to innovate through this pandemic. So that creativity that people found that they didn't know was in them, I hope that doesn't go away. We need more of that in the world, right? Yeah. You know, I heard a quote at some point during the pandemic that has really stuck with me. And it's that, you know, through this process, we shouldn't be looking towards what we knew. We should be looking towards what is new. So let's take what we knew and improvise on it and create a better world for all of us. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we are just about out of time. But I always like to ask of all of my guests, you know, when when there are those tougher days, which I'm sure must be um, uh, for you as a leader, what do you draw on for inspiration, for strength when it seems that, you know, whatever obstacles are in front of you might otherwise be insurmountable? I actually look to nature and God, and I find God in nature. Uh, so I go for very long walks, and uh, during those walks, I will often be listening to gospel or praise and worship music, and it just really allows me to know that I can continue to do all of the things that he has planned for my life. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I can only imagine there are very, very beautiful walks in Appleton, having been able to be there uh, and see it's just such a, a beautiful environment and, and landscape there. President Laurie Carter, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate it. Thank you.